how the covert narcissist blends the good with the bad and how they use that to manipulate. Sometimes you hear a story and you're like, well, yeah, that's not a big deal. But when you've lived it, you realize that is an absolute manipulation. The problem with what happens is they take often things that are positive and they will throw in something to manipulate it and and flip it to a negative is that making sense and what that does is it 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 messes with your trust it completely is a breach of trust and it also messes with the way you feel about the way you trust yourself they blend the good with the bad so seamlessly that you just you just go along with it and believe you fully believe what's happening it is so covert i mean it's so under the radar, right? It's as if the good is intertwined with the bad, like there is veins. Like I just pictured like, here's this good. And then there's veins of bad. There's veins of deception and manipulation woven through it and completely entwined with anything good. So one example I have is how they use your vulnerabilities to gain your trust and to create a world where you feel like they are your safe space and they're your partner. And then they take that same vulnerability and turn it around and use it against you. To me, that is one of the most malicious things you can do to someone emotionally. It's incredibly damaging. And it's um, even for people who have a lot of self-awareness and people who have been, who are like trying to work on their stuff in therapy, you know, like maybe, so let's just like, take my example. Okay. My example is personally abandonment, huge issue. Okay. I'm not going to go into details and whatever, but it's big. Okay. It's a big giant issue. <laughs> and knowing this, you know, choosing people who are, um, who feel safe around, that particular issue or what I thought was safe at the time um, or what seemed safe or what basically he would play into the vulnerability of abandonment by making sure for the first few years I never felt abandoned, making sure that I was always told and shown that I meant something and that um, that the person that he wouldn't that he would be there going out of his way to be there when he didn't have to, leaving notes of how much um, care and attention he gives. And you know what I'm saying? Like a form of love bombing that felt natural. It didn't feel like, like excessive. It just felt like someone who had compassion for the vulnerability. All right. And then what happens when there is any conflict whatsoever that is threatening this person's um, ego, really, threatening the, threatening to make them have to look at themselves, right? <laughs> Which is part of conflict. We have to look at ourselves. But anyway, that's another topic. As soon as that happens, silent treatment comes on. What does the silent treatment do to someone with abandonment issues? It freaks them out. Okay. And then, and then, and then he just takes off, you know, or, or, or threatens to leave. This goes on for years and years, right? Because what happens after that is when they come back from leaving, walking away or the silent treatment is somehow you're made to feel it's your fault. And you're the one apologizing for the fact that they did something completely in breach of trust of your vulnerability. It's really sick and it's very disturbing. And does that make sense? That's a, that's one way that they mix all giving you all this good with, with the bad. So they might love and support you during times of crisis or during difficult times, they might show show you everything you need, and then they'll turn on you, and and they'll use it against you. They um, they act like they are equal. Oh, this is an interesting one. Okay, and especially in non romantic relationships, maybe friend narcs or narcs at work, they may act like they are the same and equal, and um, present like. Like, you know, hey, let's go to lunch. They pay half the time, you pay half the time, you know, like as if you're the same, as if you're on equal playing field and there is no, and they do that to get into your life. And then they get in your life and you may even like have them over for dinner or whatever, you know, like be friends. And 
they start prying for information like you're talking about there, like somebody mentioned. And eventually it'll come around to them using you. And usually it's, you know, either financially or to knock you down in status. <laughs> a lot of them will use your status what they perceive as your status in, in, in when it's non-romantic to um, better their own too. So yeah, covert narcissism's not pretty. This is an interesting one. So during a devalue, a narcissist, a covert narcissist might devalue you and devalue you and you're just feeling terrible and then they will t flip it around as if the devaluing was of value. Does that make sense? It's a form of gaslighting. It's subtle put downs, subtle put downs over and over, over a topic, or maybe um, not even put downs, but just dissatisfaction being shown. And then they'll go around and like, maybe they're dissatisfied an entire dinner. I'm just going to make something up. They're just slightly dissatisfied about an entire meal. Everything's, nothing's right. Nothing's just, and then after the meal, they'll, they'll say, thank you so much. That was a lovely dinner. As if to say, you see what happens then when they do things like that is number one, it's confusing and it's gaslighting because they didn't have a lovely dinner. It's totally lying. <laughs> Saying thank you is polite and all, but it's not, it's the actions that come before it or after it that make that thank you mean anything, right? And it's also, um, it gives them, that you can't accuse them of anything. They said thank you. They said they did the right polite thing, right? So it, they make it so that the abuse is hidden and buried inside of positivity, like saying thank you. It makes you feel confused and conflicted, doesn't it? It makes you so that you don't know if you're being abused or if it's you, if it's you, because it's twisted around. Okay, so the covert narcissist. One thing they are really, really good at is getting people to protect them. And we don't want to see the truth of what they are because they set it up. So we're like always protecting their emotional states. Does that make sense? So we're always protecting them. And once you see who they are, that's when you can close that door and not go back. They won't look at the abuse that they cause. So to them, when people get mad at them at the end, yeah. We're always crazy and they are always the victim. That's the way it is. Another thing is the covert narcissism allows the narcissist to maintain the illusion of being the good guy, right? A lot of them are very altruistic narcissists. In other words, they go out in the world and they're do-gooders and or they, they have a thing that they attach to and they go and like serve the world in, in certain ways. And yet they are completely toxic and abusive within their own interpersonal relationship. They, that kind tends to save the abuse for one person or, or very few that are close to them. And it's 100% self. Um, it's, it's only those who, who see who they, it's only those who they're intimate and close with, this is what I'm saying, that get the abuse for that type of, usually for that type. And that's so difficult because the rest of the world sees them as this heroic, service-oriented good guy. And they can maintain the illusion of good guy by always twisting everything around something good. For instance, never yelling at you, but somehow making you feel devalued. And I know that someone can argue no one can make you feel anything, but if you've ever been devalued, I would argue that point. <laughs> um, if you've ever been trauma bonded and devalued and, you know, then, then you know that, that it's absolutely not true. Someone can affect how you feel emotionally about yourself over time. They can't see, they cannot accept and they cannot own anything that when it comes to the way they are abusive, it's like, it's, I, I feel like it's almost like if we know, then they can't get away with it. So if they, if they admit they know, then they can't get away with it anymore. And so therefore they can't admit they know because they need it. They can't function in any other way. They won't grow their emotional selves up enough to be healthy for another person. It's crazy. If he, he wasn't a, if he wasn't a covert narc, we would be so perfect together. Isn't that the most, okay, okay. Here's the thing, Shannon. Don't try to, ooh, let me let that blurry go away. There we go. 
try to see it a little differently. Let me, or let me give you suggestions on ways to see that differently. He is a covert narcissist, period. When you add, we would be so perfect together, there is an ounce of hope. And there is that grief that is very difficult to let go of. It's part of the trauma bonding the reason you would be so perfect together is they are good at grooming, they are good at mirroring, and they are good at they are good at creating the illusion of connection. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you experienced someone genuinely kind to you and just like genuinely hanging out with you, not even romantically, just if you experience something different in your life, you will you'll understand this more and when you when you have that opportunity you will understand it differently but the reason they that they seem so perfect for you i mean there may be aspects of the real, of the of the um dynamic between you and there may be aspects of who you are as people but sure you could get along i mean they're not one thing they're not just especially the covert you know they're not just this one thing they present as a whole lot of things. They're really good at presenting the way they want to present to be seen so that they fit in wherever they are. Does that make sense? That's why when you say that you'd be perfect together if it weren't for this, think about it how an altruistic covert narcissist will go out and like say be a, I don't know, um, a, someone that I don't know, let's pick anything, pick anything in the world where they're do-gooders, you know, uh, um, someone high in, someone in the church, someone in, you know, that it, it should be in a position of helping people, okay, or, or life-saving position, that type of thing, you know, people who go out and do first aid or whatever to help other people, and or volunteer, or, you know, they do things that are just like, so service-oriented, you think they must have compassion and empathy, think about how the world sees them, that's a mask. When they go home, they're gaslighting and projecting and manipulating their partner. So it's that same thing. People, it, it's what makes you in disbelief of the, of the narcissist narcissism. Okay. So try to see that he is what he is. End of sentence. Doesn't matter whether his, he's good at putting on a mask to make it look as if you fit together. And it doesn't matter if he's mirroring your good traits right back at you. And that's the other thing. They mirror your good traits right back at you. So what you really are seeing is, you're, is when you say we'd be perfect together is a piece of yourself. And that's, that's what a narcissist does, is they, they take on personality traits from other people and they mirror it back. And that's how, they, that's how they blend in in order to manipulate, in order to create the, the illusion of what life is, <laughs> okay? They break our ability to trust ourselves through all of this stuff that we're talking about. When you give someone a bunch of good and then you take it away by interjecting bad, you teach that person that they can't trust themselves because through the good, you trust the, you trust the situation. Then comes the bad. So then you're like, what happened? What it's me. It's me. Right. Because you want the good again. Right. And so you're, you're being taught. You can't trust yourself. Is that making any sense? And so you, as you are, going through this and seeing all of these insights that you did have, Shannon, you can start to learn that you can trust yourself again.